Hey, buddies, Potemic Whiskey here, and welcome back to Against the Storm. And today we're going to be starting another colony. This isn't going to be a particularly advanced colony, but we are checking out some new content here. We have unlocked some new materials, and we have access now to the Scarlet Orchard, which is an interesting chunk of the map. There, it is called the Herb Garden of the Kingdom due to the abundance of herbs, berries, and roots. So that is going to set the direction of our empire. So there's a ton of roots, there's a ton of grains, and uh, quite a bit of eggs and berries. So we're going to have a very easy time with our food production here. And there's sort of not so much plant fiber and resin, a good bit of herbs, a little bit of copper ore and stone, and some reeds. Our axes are reinforced, so wood cutting will be 15% faster and fuel will burn 25% faster or longer as well. So we're going to have a pretty easy time on this one. And I really have been running into a little bit of an issue with parts in a lot of my run throughs. So I'm kind of tempted to pick parts here as my embarkation material. Stone being limited is an interesting one. There's also an interesting thing combo of taking planks and clay, which would allow me to basically bypass the the need for pr producing some planks in the early game I, I like the idea of bringing clay because that's worth at least 10 bricks minimum that we can get out of that potentially up to uh 20 bricks so 10 to 20 bricks for third this is that, that's what this is with a little bit of villager work time whereas the parts now that represents a lot of extra storage buildings of extra hearts of extra scavengers so this kind of is tempting to start taking this it's really really underrated um from my perspective i think i'm going to take the 10 parts yeah I, I like the idea of having access to more storage facilities it makes my economy more efficient now we've got two events here the first one is that as long as someone has housing every unit will have a 20 percent chance to double the yield of each production cycle so this is like a 20% production boost during the drizzle season as long as everyone is in housing and housing is one of the easiest needs to meet need, needs to get met and then sun festivities is if we have access to one complex food we'll have another 20% to double the production yield in each production cycle so this is huge also this is active only during drizzle so this feels a lot like a scavenging kind of game where maybe we don't establish quite as many farms we of course have the looming darkness which is the global resolve debuff we have fog so, of course, naturally, this is going to be relatively easy to deal with because everyone will have houses. We have mel melancholy. So if people don't have complex food and housing, they will, ooh, they will suffer a penalty to their resolve and it will get worse. Although it is active quite late. And grim fate. Grim fate, I feel like this is like a, you've taken too long to win the game. So we should have, we should actually have a fairly easy time dealing with this because meeting all of our bonuses also solves the problems we'll hit. So we just have to do housing and complex food. To really meet that need so that's something i want to start thinking about maybe year two or three is the complex food part of this uh, and having a look at our starting location we have some reed fields which will give us a little bit of access to roots and clay we have access to storm bird nests which is eggs and meat and that's it that's it anything else we're gonna have to find is gonna have to be through expansion and this is a relatively large map Ooh, this glade is very dangerous the crown forbids you from discovering it Ooh, that's interesting. I haven't seen one of those before. So the crown will most likely actually get upset if I discover what's in here. Perhaps the crown has committed some atrocities or something like that. That is my first thought that there is a cover up here that they don't want us to know about. We have a furnace option, carpenter and lumber mill. Furnace is nice for bricks, but I don't have access to any stone. So that's kind of out for me. Um, it really does come down to the carpenter or lumber mill for me. And... I think the fact that I would be able to make some luxury goods fairly reliably here, even though this is a weaker plank recipe, I think that's actually not a bad deal. Here's the thing though, being able to produce flour is really important for getting tier two food. Now, you know what? I'm gonna go for the carpenter because I, I usually go for the lumber mill. So let's, let's try something slightly a little bit different. Now, I don't wanna pick up the lumber mill as well because I don't wanna have overlap in my things. I feel like the supplier is another reasonable choice here. It gives me a way to turn plant fiber or reeds into fabric as well as access to pottery and trade goods you know because i could produce pottery and turn those into trade goods at a relatively good exchange rate the furnace and lumber mill well the furnace is okay i don't know how much i'll be able to make use of the furnace because i don't have a way to make fla flour i could kind of prospectively get the furnace to be able to make better bricks how important are bricks to me this game 
I mean, bricks are useful, but they're not the most important thing. I feel like bricks are actually more useful than fabric, though. And having the option to make copper ore might not be a bad move if I find a way to get some copper. And if I do find a source of flour, I can make pies, which are pretty damn decent. So I'll go ahead and take that. Now I got to pick my resource collection building. Right now, I have access to the woodcutter's camp. I have access to the stonecutter's camp, which is no use to me. And I have access to the scavenger's camp, which is very useful to me. So which of these three? Well, we know this map is going to have a lot of herbs and berries. So I think I'm going to take the herbalist camp kind of prospectively knowing a little bit about what this map contains from the description I was given. And I think in this particular game, we're going to try to cut through uh, very early. So I'll get one woodcutting camp and I'll get a scavenger camp over here for this. Maybe I'll go double woodcutter. No, I think I'll open with one. Ah, double woodcutter is such a good opener, though. It's like it's so powerful to start with two woodcutters and a scavenger camp. And that uses up six of your guys and then you can get housing quite easily. I do realize, I do, I, I do feel like there's a couple of like optimal moves in the early game. And, and I think getting double woodcutter has never gone wrong on me before. So I feel like there's no reason I wouldn't do it. So I'll let my people begin activating. We've got our early game set. Right, let's go ahead and put three beavers on this first one. I'll put three humans on this second one. And then I'll put my two lizards on this scavenger camp over here. And that'll get the wood cutting started. I'll go straight through to this glade because I'd like to find something in it if I could. Right, our first cornerstone. Cannibalism would give me meat every time someone dies. The Royal Academy and will supply anyone willing to help gain. Ooh, 20 reed and 20 clay would be very, very reliable income for discovering glades. Extra villagers is really good as well. But I feel like this like reasonably secure supply of clay will be huge for me this game. And reeds are quite useful as well. So I think I'm going to take that because it means all of these little, like tiny little patches of glade are going to actually yield significant amounts of resources for me, which I'm very happy about. Now we get to pick our orders. There is like an achievement for not for doing a mission without doing an order at all. Solve any two glade events and I'll get a group of lizards and some goods, or I could build a couple of camps and get some parts and some clay. Well, I'm going to want to be doing a lot of glade exploration this game. And I already have a ton of parts and I have a good supply of clay already. So I feel like going for the extra lizards here will significantly increase my abilities. Mm. I like the idea of three packs, being able to pick up a bonus to this crude workstation upgrade and also being able to package up goods. This kind of opens up trading options for me too. So I'll go ahead and take that. I could cut through and discover any glade or I could go for wood cutting and pick up parts and go for more beavers. Well, these are kind of... Mm. These kind of synergy, like, I kind of want both of these. This is nice because I will be cutting through glades, which would mean I would be going for, because, and this would help me cut through more glades and also build another lumber camp. I think I have two lumber camps. The extra beavers would be really, really nice. I'm going to go for exploration here because I plan to cut through a lot of glades, plus the five simple tools will make it easier to maybe solve two events. So I think that kind of synergizes really, really well with what I want to be doing. So I'll put one lizard on here and then leave one lizard uh, to build the houses through the year. It won't take him too long, but he will slowly get to work on it. I still haven't figured out what the optimal road strategy is. I think I have a, a vaguely okay road strategy, which is to kind of just put down roads uh, wherever it kind of makes sense. So we found what looks to be a fallen lizard encampment. I could pick up goods, pack of meat, an amber pouch, Queen's Grace, bit of reputation. Don't think I care too much about the parts. I think I would like the queen, the reputation and the amber. So I'll put, uh, I'll put a couple of humans on that. I'll take them off this job and put two humans here to get that fulfilled. Sorry, I can't put two humans on. I have to put a lizard and a human. There we go. Right. We'll get our 10 amber nice and early. That 10 amber could be critical uh, for our very early game. We might be able to pick up a nice perk for it. So I'll actually pop down that a prospective little trading camp, trading post as well. I need to think about my next two glades that I'd like to cut through to. There's a potential glade over here that I'd like to get to. So I'll go ahead and pop my two woodcutters together. I actually want them to cooperate this game, weirdly enough, which I haven't been doing much. I just sliced through to there and then also cut just a little bit of wood around here. So they'll take a little bit of time to get through there, but that's fine. Add five more wood and then they can slowly fill out this bar. Excellent. So half a point of reputation isn't much in any sense of the word, but this does get me one of my two events filled for the, uh, the lizard mission here. So that's exciting, the fact that we've made progress on that one already. We are in the first clearance. And what did we actually find in here? It looks like we found a reed field. So that'll be a nice supply and some roots as well. Nothing too important, but some useful stuff. Let's get down our crude workstation and our makeshift post. Both of these are useful early game buildings. 
that are relatively cheap. I wonder what's in this glade here. That extra 20 clay is huge. It's going to mean so many brick for me. All right, nice. We found a herb node and a stormbird nest and a copper vein. The copper vein is actually a big deal. Quite a big deal to find a copper vein. But I don't really have enough room. So I'll just crack another lizard here. I think one lizard working on grains is fine. What will I use the others on? We're making plenty of wood. I think I'd like to slice through now to this glade here. I'll have both my guys work on that. It's a bit of a larger glade, but there might be an event in here for me to solve. Usually the bigger ones tend to contain an event for you to solve. I do wish it would tell you who likes this kind of a place, because I'm pretty sure the, um, the beavers are actually a big fan of working in here. Yeah, they get plus five resolve for working in workstations. So it looks like beavers really like crafting in general. I'll go ahead and set a human to work in the crude workstation so I can get my hands on some bricks and fabric and planks. They'll slowly just chip away at those needs. I could probably even just move this like a little bit closer to the um, trading post as well. I'm excited to see what's in here and we found a stone deposit that's excellent. A reliable source of stone and a fertile soil. I definitely want to get that fertile soil ready for the next um, season. So I'm going to go ahead and deliver this. Pick up my five tools as well as my scouts pack. Boom. That might give me the tools that I need for this. No, not quite. A lot of parts here. Queen's Grace. I could pick up another point of Queen's Grace and level up. What can I pick up building wise? A smelter would let me make copper bars, which I would like this game. I don't know if I'm going to have much access to meat from the smokehouse. I think a smokehouse is a low priority for me. Yeah, I do, I do think so. I will have, I mean, incense isn't bad, as is a source of pot pottery, but maybe the bakery does the same but better but i don't even care about the bakery honestly i think it's a smelter here the smelter has biscuits it has access to copper bars as well as crystallized dew although i don't need this recipe at all because i can i will already get a source of crystallized dew from harvesting copper from a mine so i will just go uh, i'll go smelter this time so now i have access to a way to produce copper so that's something to consider oh i already had a smelter oh shoot i already had a furnace ah uh, i should have gone for the bakery Oh, that's part of how the cookie crumbles sometimes. You make a mistake. Uh, it happens. Let's go ahead and cut our way through to another glade. The first year is over, and that means we get a new cornerstone as well as a pack of immigrants. Let's have a look at the cornerstone. Rich glades. Extra resources in my glades is pretty good. Uh, vegetable production is increased by plus three, but global resolve is decreased. I don't think I like infused rainfall. Rich glades feels like a nice one. It just means we have a little bit more resources to harvest. Hmm... Cutting through to glades would give me simple tools as well as a 15% boost to my wood cutting, which is not bad. And clothing the people. Mm, I don't think I want to do packs of trade goods this mission. Maybe, maybe. Just depends on what I can make, really. I don't think I care about fulfilling my village's need for clothing on this expedition. It doesn't really fit in with any of my plans. It's really complex food. I should have brought a bakery because I want to do complex food. See, this is why I, sometimes I forget what I'm supposed to do in a mission and it just, you know, comes back to bite me in the bum. One of each feels a little bit more balanced here. I'll grab one of each type of villager. I definitely feel like I need to do these three packs. So that's what I will get to work on with a new villager here. I'll put a beaver to work in this place. Mm. Maybe I shouldn't do that until I have a reliable source of better wood. I don't really have a whole lot of food, actually. So what we're going to do instead now, have a scavenger's camp. I'll go ahead and move it over next to these eggs. And I'll put a second lizard on it. And there's a decent amount of scavengeable stuff. So I tell you what, I will get myself a second scavenger's camp. Oh, did I make the trading post right? She's not far away now. Right, put a lizard on here and he'll just work away on some reeds for me. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this uh, plus 10 charges whenever I discover a glade. Because this is just going to mean more resources that I can kind of like fiddle away with. I don't think I can reliably pack up food. I think our big thing is to get this carpenter up. So... There she is. We'll, we'll pop down the carpenter in that nice central location. We found a new glade. This one has a wheat field and a herb node. That's going to be helpful. We'll be able to turn those into useful stuff. And another copper vein. So potential mining. They're not very strong mines is the problem. They're just unlimited copper. Like a single tile copper is really not you want to, what you want to be doing for a mine. Because it's a minute of villager time for one copper ore. It's, it is unlimited, but it's kind of ass. Right, we're sitting on 10 amber. And we probably have the resources to potentially grab another thing. I could also grab five more simple tools. Getting the forager's camp wouldn't be completely a waste if I could somehow grab that. I would need seven more of these. Or I could get five tools. Do I, would I rather get five tools and a reputation? Right, if we think about this, 
Ooh, five tools would get me 20 amber. That would be a really, really big payoff, actually. Which would mean I'd be able to buy a better perk next time around. Plus one fabric production feels nice, too. It might set my the tone of my town in a more fabric-oriented direction. I'm pretty sure you can turn fabric into this. Do I have a reliable source of fabric? That's the real question. I could turn reeds into fabric, and I have like an insane amount of reeds. Yeah. Yeah, I have a really, really good supply of reeds. So I think I'm going to go ahead and buy reinforced needles. That'll give me a little bit more fabric and I can turn that into construction materials. And then this doesn't feel so horrendously inefficient. And then I also want to buy five tools. Now five tools is going to be quite expensive. Like it would cost me seven parts. And those parts are pretty damn valuable. I could probably offload like 60 wood. That'll get me two of my tools. I have a good supply of reeds and reeds are a little bit more valuable than wood. So maybe 60 wood and 20 reeds four or five simple tools that's all she wrote i'll come over here set my villagers to an investigation here and we'll take that 20 amber and while the trader will take quite a while to get back around the next time it comes around we will pick up another nice buff it's not all bad it's not all bad we're only in the drizzle of our second year and i feel like we're already off to a really really strong start especially with this fabric production our real problem is the lack of a food a food solution here rain mill is interesting would give me really good access to flour production it's a bit specialized is my problem here's the question do i have a way to make flour already i actually don't so if i want to get tier two food i'll almost certainly have to make use of the rain mill so i'll go ahead and pick up the rain mill all right let's get this scavenger camp working on eggs again eggs is kind of important because we're a bit low on food at the moment we're into the new season and we actually have an order ready to complete i would like to tap this now do i want to tap this now or do i want to wait two extra lizards wouldn't be bad because i could start gathering these reeds these roots over here so i tell you what we'll go ahead and tap the problem solver immediately get to work on a stone cutters camp right over there pop a wood cutter over here i'm gonna add a beaver to this camp and get rid of that human maybe a bit overzealous to go to double uh double thingy here a bit this early we can pick a new thing brewery clothier yeah, smokehouse. I'm going to re-roll and hope for a farm or something. Nope, no farming. Fulfilling luxury for free isn't bad in terms of resolve, but it doesn't give me any production. I guess I'll grab library. Library, it, it does fulfill a need for free, which isn't the most common thing in the world. It'll take me a while to build it, but I'm not worried about that, to be honest. I'll put a beaver in here and his goal will be to produce wood. I'll turn off wood production in here. I will, however, continue to produce bricks. I'll have him slowly work on building up a nice supply of planks as well as just a little bit of luxury goods to sell off at the next trader. It's quite a while until that trader gets here. So I'm kind of more concerned with the um, with the planks. Now with my stone cutters camp, we'll pop into lizards right there. That's perfect. And we'll build a nice road all the way down here. These guys will start to gather some roots for me. I am having a little bit of a food problem. It's not a crisis yet. But the lack of a sustainable food supply is going to be an issue for me. And that's going to kind of force my hand to break through glades. Maybe a little bit sooner than I would normally be ready. So I'll start slicing my way through a couple of glades over here. Uh, with the express purpose of, uh, well, expanding my empire. I'm also going to pop a storage somewhere over here. I'm not sure yet. I think it would be worth it to pop a storage here. There's quite a few glades that I could open. That would be powerful. We are into the storm. And this storm, I may have to consider burning extra resources in my camp. For now, though, I should be fine. It's just something I might have to consider. These guys have to walk a long way to return those goods. So it's getting pretty inefficient to chop over here. Gamage's camp has run through all of the resources it could find. Keep hitting those eggs hard. It's like our only viable resource right now. Another source of eggs and fertile soil, as well as a small abandoned cache. Could be useful for next year. Yeah, I need to make... I need to make of these they're kind of actually a priority in reality as much as i don't want them to be because getting access to the three packs here will allow me to do advanced trading which would mean a pack of trade goods would be a good supply of money for me so it's kind of necessary now at this point another year another set of orders human resolve it's going to be hard to get that human resolve that high lizard resolve might be a little bit easier. Both of these are kind of terrible missions, honestly, that I might never attempt. The lizard resolve might be easier and getting five lizards could be game changing. Rain collector, doo -doo -doo. pottery, doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah, I don't think, I don't think I want to go for advanced logistics. Now, it's not bad. I could build two rain collectors and start producing spark dew and get a pretty easy reputation point and a boost to my crystallized dew. 
destruction, but that's not a direction I've already gone this game. I think the trading goods kind of lines up better with what I'm planning to do, right? I'm using three packs to unlock trading goods. I'm using trading goods to get extra amber from producing trading goods. And then I can actually produce trade goods and get a, a reputation point out. So that kind of chains together a little bit better with how I'm playing the game right now. I'm really sad I don't have access to a farm. Uh, right, we have access to a diverse set of guys. I think I'm gonna take the four. Yeah, I, I just need a lot more people to man my town. Now I have a bit of a food problem, which is understandable. Ooh, another exploration contract. That would give me even more reed and clay whenever I discover a glad. Oh man, it's got to be reinforced tools if I can get a saw, a farm. No, I'll take the exploration contract. Those are guaranteed resources that I can use to produce things like bricks. Where is the furnace? Right, I'll pop down a furnace as well. It's going to be the next thing that I build. Being able to improve my brick production would make me happy. And I already have kind of semi-improved fabric production. I don't mind producing it out of here. It's like not a big deal to me. Move the lumber camp forward slightly. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to crack down a storage here don't have many other options here we'll have to do it'll there's going to be a lot of resource gathering happening over here these are important resources that i'll have to get access to um i will get finally another beaver well do i want a beaver working on this yeah i could take a human off here and put a beaver in here and the beaver will work faster and have a higher chance of bonus resource production i've got four humans sitting around uh which makes me think i need a herbalist camp now being able to get these uh spices or whatever they're called would be very, very useful. The the herb nodes, because there is a little bit of food and plant fiber from those. So that's gonna be an important part of what we're gonna be doing here. So I'll get this herbalist camp up, slap a couple of humans on it. Oh, housing, right. Housing is actually an issue because if my people have housing during the drizzle phase, they actually produce more. Let's make sure we're fulfilling housing need. Throw down those hoses. Houses, hooses, hooses, hooses. And put a couple of, uh, <laughs> put a couple of those, uh, those roads around it. I know I'm exploring in a very like snaky, weird way, um, but this is kind of what I need to do. Uh, it's, it's really my only option. So we'll go ahead and grab a couple of humans working on this. They'll start grabbing me some herbs and there'll be a little bit of food in that as well. Because I am struggling on the food front. Like my next, I, th I think my next trade is going to heavily and significantly involve a lot of food trading. I'm really happy that these stormbird nests have extra charges. That's going to buy me a lot of time. <laughs> Things are not looking so great here. Not gonna lie. I don't know why these guys are focused on producing fabric. I really need bricks. Trader has arrived. Nice to meet you, Zork. Now, I am sitting on 20 amber. This guy has a decent amount of food. Any farmer can fi carry five more. Plus one to ale production. I am not producing ale. Really, really unfortunate. This guy has a ton of perks that I really want, like packs of crops are worth more. Planting crops is, is faster. But I just never got the small farm un unlocked, right? I don't, I don't have... I don't... Yeah, I, I just don't have small farms. So... This trading mission will almost exclusively be about getting some food. Now, how much are mushroom soups? I kind of like my standard measure of value. Oh, he doesn't actually want to buy wood, right? Because I do have wood in stock. Yeah, I do. I have 75 wood. Ah, so there's certain things he doesn't want to buy. All right, so one pack. I I'd love I'd love if there was like a price reference on all these items, just so I had like an idea of equivalent exchange in terms of amber. So how many tools can I get for one luxury pack? I can get two tools for that or about five mush soup, which would help me a lot. Or 14 broccoli. Well, I tell you what, these packs of luxury goods existed solely for value for trade. So I think I'm going to throw them all in here and grab myself as much mushroom soup as I can humanly get. 40 food will help me out a lot. I might even sell five amber for five tools. Although mm, I think if I was going to do something like this, I'd just pick up like a cheap food like these reeds or these roots rather. Pick up a few roots just to have a nice cheap food in the bank. Yeah. Man, these farmer upgrades would be sick though if I could get them. But we, we should be able to survive this year with this food production now. So I'm happy with that trade. Obviously it wasn't perfect or ideal, but it was good enough. And I am continuing to produce. Now wait, where am, I, where am I making luxury goods? Have I forgotten already? Ah, that's right. We're slowly producing luxury goods from this carpenter here, which is excellent actually, because this is just free trade value for very little real cost. Now that I have a food surplus, I'm going to set one of these guys over to actually grab some more reeds from over here. Now, I do have an order complete, which is this three packs here, so I can start doing better packaging to make some of these packs of trade goods out of my makeshift post. So I definitely don't need really any of these for now. Now, what trade good am I going to make this out of? I think pottery might be a good move to go for once I have the furnace up. So I'll probably do this out of pottery. And I definitely want to produce at least 20. 
So I think pottery is our is, is the next important thing for me to unlock. What have we got here? Please small farm. Yes. Okay. Reliable food source. Get. Go ahead and that kind of changes the game for me a little bit. Pop my small farm here for now. And once I'm through this glade, I'll, uh, I'll clear a little bit of a room around it. Just waiting for the storm. I don't have enough wood. Ah, okay. What do we find in here? Right, we found a kiln that we can reignite. Oh, this is perfect. It can produce coal, bricks, and jerky. I actually don't need any of those things. We have a fine smith. They can produce amber. Ooh, simple tools and training gear. Simple tools is the only one there that I really like. Um, and we have a ranch. Now there's an interesting one. Perhaps a reliable, reliable food supply. Yeah, uh, if we could restore this. So these are definitely things we might want to look into restoring in the near future. But for now, definitely moving the woodcutters camp over here so I can start clearing up a little bit of room around this farm. There is a reed field in here, a little bit of paved road. So the reed field is nice because that means the reed, think of reeds and wood as trade value for me, right? These packs of luxury goods are just are going to be a way that I make money from trading. We've almost completely harvested all the roots here. We are like completely dominating the landscape. We're like harvesting everything. We're like locusts. It's fabulous. I love it. Big fan of the locust gameplay style. Scavenger camp has eaten through all the eggs and thankfully I have a, uh, a, 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 a storehouse over here. So harvesting over here won't be like horribly inefficient. It'll just be like moderately inefficient. Ooh, okay. Happiness is dipping very low. Let's start burning some wood to just get these lizards to survive through. We're only on level one hostility, but that's still pretty bad. There we go. We've made it through. Let's turn off the wood burning. What have we got here? We got ourselves a storm walker, some kind of duck build lad. Do we, it's basically down to, do we want two beavers or do we want two lizards? I feel like two beavers would make a huge difference for my wood cutting. So I'm going to grab two beavers and immediately put them to work in wood cutting for me. Because Jesus, do I need a bit of wood cutting. Let's kind of scooch this woodcutter camp over. This small farm, I want to hit all these fields if I can. Like so. And now we're in the drizzle. So I definitely want to put two humans immediately on here. I don't have a way to make flour i would have to build a rain mill and then supply it with workers which is something i can do i can do that so i think i will make the rain mill um, but i'll make a mixture of vegetables and common goods because i've just been having trouble with food we have also a cornerstone the ritual of prosperity mm, i don't like this one i don't like the dying thing i like over diligent workers free barrels means you know i think i think pretty sure barrels can be turned into um pack of trade goods so just getting passive extra resources that i can convert into trade value is a big plus for me um i think i'm going to take a lizard off of maybe reed scavenging i'm gonna take it off stone cutting scavenging and put it into my furnace there's a bit of jo job juggling that needs to go on here and now i don't produce bricks in this crude workstation anymore and since it's only used to produce fabric i'm going to take one of my human workers off of it and also i think i don't need two beavers working away in this carpenter. I'm going to put another third beaver on my woodcutters because I just need to get, need to start clearing out the forest a little bit more and hitting more glades. We have a couple of new orders. Awesome. Let's have a look here. Lost knowledge. Ooh, that would involve going into the dangerous parts, but I really don't want to do clothing. So I'll go ahead and do lost knowledge. I've kind of gone for a more exploratory trading kind of build. <gasps> I forgot to actually build the fields. Okay, that's important in order to get this stuff built. Now, is there anywhere that I'm overproducing things that I I have too many workers on a place that I don't need. Could probably free up a lizard from this reed scavenging camp. And that way I have three, that way I have three unemployed people who I can, who can do construction and, you know, planting fields and all that sort of stuff. That's kind of important. No one is out of a house because I build my houses in little 12 housing blocks, which makes me happy. I definitely need to hit another couple of glades. Let's have a look around. All right, we've got a couple of easy glades over here that we could tap. Let's pop down a storage on this end of the map. Any resources that we discover over here, it'll significantly cut down the travel time to our capital um, and it'll make chopping through a little bit simpler as well. So we'll cut straight through and then across. Do I have the tools for this? I don't have the tools for this small abandoned cache. The trader isn't here yet. Do I want to start rebuilding some of these things? I don't think I need them just yet. I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious though, more than anything. I'm tempted to break the fine smith. I think I'm tempted to break the, the, the kiln actually. I don't need a source of jerky, but a, a bunch of bricks and coal kind of sounds pretty good to me. So I'll just get like these guys to real quick, a couple of lizards and a human to, to scavenge here. I'll probably rebuild the fine smith and the ranch just so I can see what they do, because I've never seen buildings like that before. We're in the clearance now, so we're going to be getting a few extra uh, farming resources here. I'm very, very, very delighted about that, really, because um, a, re a lack of a renewable food source was like really killing me. We have our rain mill, so we do have a way to turn grain into flour, as well as roots, potentially. 
I reckon I'll grab a beaver. I think beavers might like to work here. Yeah, plus five resolve for working in here. I don't think I want to be making oil. I don't think I want to be making manuscripts right now. I think this mostly exists to make the little bit of flour that I could potentially use uh, to make some pies. A little bit of pie would make my people very happy. I know the storage just went up so these people won't have to work walk very far to store their resources. Like honestly, that's like a, a disgusting amount of tiles to cut down from a travel trip. They still have to go to the heart to get food and stuff like that. Still a major, major improvement. There's a little bit of stone over here that I'll go ahead and start gathering. This guy does have to walk a very long way, which is unfortunate, but not much I can do about. So double checking my missions, I definitely want to be making trade goods and exploring. And I'm getting to the point now where I should start considering exploring some dangerous glades. Fulfill the need for Brotherhood a hundred times. This will get me tea production and five new lizards as well as 25 amber. I kind of need the population. I don't have a way to fulfill Brotherhood right now, but that definitely points me in that direction. Oh right, I have nobody working in the library. I'll put a lizard in charge of this. That'll mean my luxury need for the, uh, the beavers will be filled. And it also means if I can get manuscripts, the need for education could be fulfilled as well. It's mostly a beaver thing, really, whereas religion is sort of a human and lizard thing. But yeah, let's go ahead and rebuild the ranch. I'll put one lizard on it and I'll tell him to rebuild. I'm really curious to see what the ranch holds. Another storm. I think this storm, I'm going to favor the lizards and start burning wood early. Boom. That'll just make sure that we, uh, we don't fall too low here. The humans are actually having a really hard time. I may have to unfavor the lizards a bit. Yeah, I'll unfavor the lizards. We'll see how bad it gets. Ah, we discovered another couple of glades. We found some wheat fields and some abandoned caches. We might be able to pick up some, some tools during the next spring. So that'll be exciting. We did get into the wild, so we'll get better wood cutting and a Yes, 10 tools. That's perfect. That's going to allow us to actually check these out and maybe get some amber. Mm, quite a bit of amber available, if we so wish. Plus, I want the, that reputation to finish the game a little bit quicker. Uh, Guild House would fulfill education for free. The tavern would fulfill brotherhood for free. So that's exactly what I'm picking up here. Grab myself the tavern. Pop a nice tavern over here at the edge of town. Lizards do love a scrap. So it looks like we found some roots. We found some plants. So some small stuff from these glades. Oh, another glade has been found with a little bit of swamp wheat in it. Excellent. So we'll be able to harvest up that swamp wheat pretty easily with my herbalist place. And um, we got a trader too arrived. And it's a new year, so we can pick some new immigrants. I generally, again, I generally favor a balanced group that brings food because it just gives me a lot of flexibility in where I assign my people. Leftover crops. Ooh, now that's a nice one. I could get a free line of root delivery, but for me personally, one pack of crops for every 10 grain produced feels like a great way to boost your economy. Have at least 20 beavers for 30 seconds. I only have nine. I actually don't have a very big population this round. So anything that's like big pop, probably not for me. But packs of crops. Now this is possible for me, especially because I have that cornerstone. The hard part will be the 40 farm fields, but the packs of crops shouldn't be too bad. So I'll go ahead and focus on farming. Luxuries for the Citadel shouldn't be too hard for me to do, whereas rainproof coats would be quite difficult. This just requires reeds and wood, really, and like worker time. So... I think I'll pick those two because that'll make my life just that little bit easier. Um, I'm surprised I ha have I not made any pottery yet? Am I am I seeing that right? Uh, do I not have a building that makes pottery? Hang on. Yeah, I don't I don't have a building that makes pottery. That's uh that's a bit of a critical error on my part because I'm trying to turn pottery into uh, trade goods here for a while. Uh, whoops. Well, 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 well. I think I'm gonna take the leftover crops cornerstone. This now means that producing wheat gives me just free crops, which is a big deal. Um, I'm gonna turn off vegetable production. We'll focus entirely on grain. And I think I will pick up the mold uh, supply. Forager's camp. Actually, the forager's camp would be huge. There's a lot of grain around the map that I could pick up. If I could get both the forager camp and the mold supply, I'd be in like a disgustingly, disgustingly strong position. So let's see if we can pick up 19 amber is what I need. So there'll be quite a bit of trading of these nice goods. And that gets me most of the way there, actually. All these excess high quality goods that I have. I have plenty of reeds, so selling off a little bit of fabric wouldn't be the most terrible thing in the world. It'll just take worker time to replace it. Maybe I shouldn't sell off all, like, 12 of it? I don't want to sell off my wood. I don't really want to sell food either. I have a ton of clay. Do you know what? We'll sell some bricks. Not all of them, but a decent amount. And then just throw a few herbs on top until that evens out. And bada bing, bada boom. 19 amber. We trade that away. Immediately pick up mold supply and the forager's camp. So now we can start to mass produce grain using humans. So let's look and see where is all this wheat. Yeah, we have so much wheat to just scoop up 
So get that forager camp up as a priority. Because like if you look at this, what is it? It's like potentially 75, like 150 wheat here just from a simple forager camp, which is ridiculous. What is this? Like a 15, 15 packs of crops for free. It's ridiculous. And there's a 10% chance to produce twice as much. It's just amazing. I, lo I love buying perks. Perks is one of my favorite ways to play. We do have a ton of building materials. I think I'm going to start. I'm just going to lay down some stone roads willy nilly. I think my people spend a disproportionate amount of time like around this hearth. So I like to like encase it in stone roads. It's like a way I like to do things. It doesn't make any, it doesn't like favor any particular production direction, but anyone who's coming to the center of town now just moves faster. Um, I did find more farmable stuff up here, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Getting another farm up will be the, will be the sus here. Where's my nearest woodcutter camp? You are getting shunted up here with the view of clearing out this farm. And to that end, I'll give you a paved road at least some of the way. Oh yeah, I restored the ranch, right? Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, okay. So you can trade plant fiber for meat. So we have a we have a kind of semi renewable well, not renewable, but we have a way to produce meat. We also have a way to produce leather and a way to produce eggs. And it's actually a renewable egg supply because we can use wheat to make it. It's not the most efficient building in the world, but it does fulfill some pretty interesting needs because eggs, I think, can be used for a few different interesting food sources. Let's do another small abandoned cache because we do have the tools and I think I should have the tools to do another one and we'll just send all of these to the capital. It should be another full reputation point and that'll get me closer to actually winning the game, which has me moderately excited. Also, my lizards have the resolve they need, almost, almost the resolve we need to, um, to hit this, but we are at least generating a little bit, a little bit of passive resolve. And remember, that's your victory condition. Oh, right, tavern. I'll put a human in charge of it. So my lizards should now be able to get their brotherhood need fulfilled. Did I already have a tavern? How are they getting their brotherhood need fulfilled? I'm not sure, actually, now that I think about it. Maybe you don't actually need a worker here to fulfill needs. I don't know. I'm going to test that. I'm going to remove a worker and see if I can actually fulfill their needs without having a worker in that town. All right. Another scavenger camp has run out of resources. I'm kind of now starting to run out of a little bit of resources. It's not completely gone, but we have like just completely gone full locust here and shredded the countryside we have an absolute ton of crafting resources i do think i should assign a um a second beaver to my carpenter so i can produce more luxury goods and i'm going to put the limit up to 12 maybe even higher like 20 at this point because i just have so many reeds and so much wood that i can pack in here i'm also going to put a second lizard on the furnace i don't have a huge amount of flour in stock but it would be nice to be able to get a reliable supply of tier 2 food um, because that is an important part of the sun festivities here, as well as evading melancholy. And I'm not too far off from experiencing melancholy. Out of curiosity, let's go ahead and repair the fine smith as well. So we'll rebuild it. I know these are nice resources, but I want to know. I want to know what it has. A bakery would be nice. A smokehouse might be nice too. I actually don't have a way to make pottery. And all three of these solve my pottery need. The real question is, if I were to get the supplier, I could probably get rid of my crude workstation. Whereas that's not th true of these other two. And the supplier is a pretty good way for me to get packs of trade goods. So I'm going to go ahead and take the supplier. It might be worth it to get an You know what? I'm going to get another person working on this lumber mill. This carpenter. I need to get more of these uh, resources processed into uh, training gear. Here comes the storm. And I really don't have the wood to burn extra. This is a tough one. I might be able to now safely burn wood to keep them from falling too low. And there we go. That I'm burning that extra piece of wood actually got us through this uh, storm pretty easily. There we go. Major decision time. Cornerstone. Uh, I really don't want to do sloppy wood cutting. Yeah, 50% wood cutting speed. Way better. It's actually going to make a significant difference here. Now, curiosity. Even though I have nobody working in the tavern, I'm still getting my brotherhood need met for free, which is kind of interesting. So that tells me you don't actually need a worker for a tavern to fill the brotherhood need. Another new interesting discovery about how the game works. I kind of wish there, in terms of the UI, I wish there was like a little indicator that told me which of these I had and didn't have. Because I'm, I'm a little bit forgetful sometimes. And like I said, I think now I no longer need anyone to work in the crude workstation because I can produce fabric over here in the supplier much more efficiently. In fact, twice as efficiently. This is six for three, whereas the supplier is three for three. So I can set the, some, the limit to something like really ridiculous, like 30, because we can produce that really, really quickly. It would also be good to have just a little bit of pottery in case, well, actually pottery production is pretty important. So like 40 pottery would be good. 
So I could turn four pottery here into two pack of trade goods, whereas I can do four to three over in the makeshift post. So I think I think I'll deactivate the pack of trade goods from the supplier, even though it's not the worst thing in the world. The slight efficiency that you gain um, from doing it the other way, I'm, I'm a big fan of. I get to pick new immigrants. It might not be bad to get some extra beavers. I, I do always prefer a more diverse group. It, it just is the way I like to play. I like to have a variety of different people in my my empire. Ah, right. OK, I need to get this farm up ASAP, actually. So farm. Ah, I need to like place it in a certain way. This farm field placement is just ever so slightly obnoxious. Um, And now I think it's time for some dangerous glades. In particular, I'm super excited to see what's behind these really dangerous glades. But first, let's try a basic dangerous glade. So we'll just slice our way through here see what secrets it holds. Where's my second woodcutter? Let's also make like a little slice here, just so I have a little bit more interconnectivity through my glades. How am I doing in terms of housing? It, yeah, I should be okay for a little while. Nobody, nobody is homeless, which is perfect. Right, I need to get this farm working. Click, 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 click. Two humans, ideally. There's the two humans working on the farm and we want to produce grain. Grain primarily. Because I mean, look how many packs of crops we have just from randomly producing grain. It's amazing. We're pretty close to having luxuries for the Citadel, where I think we're finally getting to work on pack of trade goods once this supplier is up and running and making pottery. Um, I'm gonna put a second second worker into the supplier to make sure that I grab this pottery a little bit quicker. I'm excited about this dangerous glade. I, I, I don't know what it holds for me. I really wanna check out some of these really dangerous glades, but I'd like to remove the queen's impatience a little bit more. Cause I don't know, like I don't wanna like open this and the queen is like, nope, fuck you, you lose. <laughs> like the prospect of that kind of scares me. <laughs> Cause again, it's a kind of an unknown. I don't know what, what the consequence of my action would be there. All right, we got a trader arriving and we are sitting on a decent amount of amber. Ah, we could pick up a brewery, which would open up the potential to do ale, ooh, mold supply is also quite powerful. And we have a lot of goods to sell, in particular packs of crop. Although those packs of crop are kind of reserved for this mission, but that also requires me to find more farming land. And I just haven't really found much. Like there's a little bit over here and that's it. Like I found two patches of farming crop. So it's gonna be a while before I can do this anyway. So I think I might be okay selling my packs of crop here for just like as much amber as I can get. Cause if I was able to pick up the brewery, all right, by doing this, that would give me the ability to produce ale and give my people more resolve. Ooh, here's an idea. What if I were to grab this perk? Boom. Packs of crops are worth more. So I can get a few more amber from this trade. Boom. They're worth like ever so slightly more. I trade them off. Plus one pottery is really good here. I pick up the mold supply because mo more grain production means more packs of crops, which means more amber, which means more perks. And then I just have to scrounge together another 13 amber to pick up the brewery. I have a lot of flour to sell. I am in surplus on flour. And I mean, I can very easily produce luxury goods. So I could just throw four, like 10 of them into the mix here. And honestly, honestly, if I were to throw 15 luxury goods in here, I can just get like a ridiculous amount of amber. Boom, huge amber trade, boosh, and get both of these perks. Now I have a brewery and I have a better pottery. That's huge for me. My the efficiency of my of my of my guys are huge now. I have so many perks. Collecting perks is honestly the best part of the game. I have, I'm sitting on 30 stone and I have a couple of spare lizards and my empire is getting kind of sprawly. So I should really think about where my next hearth is going. I have a hearth over here. I feel like I should put a hearth over here because anyone who's like, you know, here, he could like run up here or grab this. Anyone who's working in this area is having a hard time getting to a hearth, really. So I'm going to pop a hearth here with a storage. I know this is pretty close to my other storage, but this is just a little bit more convenient of a storage anyway. Yeah, plus we've got a little laneway through here now. Um, I'll put a lizard in charge of this hearth. It will be burning a lot more fuel, but I think my woodcutters are like a lot more efficient now, so it's not a big deal. So the fine smith. Ah, interesting. So spark dew and resin. And remember, resin is a byproduct of chopping down trees. So I'm just kind of sitting on a certain amount of resin at any one time. I don't think I'm actually using it for anything. I'd have to go through all my production buildings and double check because resin is just kind of a byproduct of like living in the forest. So if I were to set up a spark do a uh, farm, I could start to produce resin. And this is a pretty efficient recipe. It wouldn't be the most productive thing I would ever do, but it is something to consider going forward about fine smiths. Like we've learned something new about the game that was useful. Well, I really just need to start consuming these resources more. And to that end, I think it comes down to adding another lizard to this furnace to just crank out as many pies as possible. 
All right, we found two new threats. We have a leaking cauldron. Destroys all planted crops and farm fields in two minutes. Okay, not good. We're going to go ahead and use fabric to clear this up. We'll use this guy plus you plus you. And we also have kills five random villagers in five minutes and three minutes. Not good. All right. Well, we'll get the planks on that. Let's make sure we prioritize plank production here and we'll set the limit to something more reasonable like 30. I'm going to take some beavers off of chopping. We'll get to work on dealing with the leaking cauldron because I don't want all my crops to die. And we will also put two beavers on solving the ancient shrine. And hopefully we'll be able to solve this. Oh my God, this thing actually moves. It's kind of terrifying. But holy God, did we find the wheat fields here and another farming plot. The farming plot is huge for us. Do I have access to the smokehouse? Oh man, finding a smokehouse. Now that is useful. It can produce jerky, pottery and incense. Hmm? Having access to a smokehouse, not bad. All right, so we've put all the resources in here. We just need them to actually do the work. And the timer still ticks while they're doing the work, which is kind of scary. So the leaking cauldron has been solved and we're working on the ancient shrine. Perfect, because losing five villages at this stage of the game would actually be kind of devastating to my economy. I'm kind of balancing on a knife's edge here. Boom, we did it. We solved both of these and we're going to pick up a significant amount of useful resources, especially for trade. It is brewery time. I do think so. And there is a very, very tidy spot for a brewery right here. Herbalist camp is done collecting mugrains. What do we got for you guys? Oh, really? Nothing for the herb camp to hit up. Surprising. All right, let's cancel both of these human jobs. Um, we'll just place the herb camp somewhere innocuous and out of the way. We do have an order to complete. Ah, lost knowledge. Three ancient tablets, three extra lizards, and a good bit of food, as well as a reputation point and a blueprint. And now we can also get value added tax for two amber for every two packs of trade goods produced. Awesome. We've also completed Brotherhood, so we just need three more rep points. And uh, mission accomplished. Game over. We made it through. We can get one of those rep points, maybe from trading, by sending this to the Citadel once we have the tools. Never had a way to build tools this map. I've had to rely on trading for it. Trapper's Camp, Lizard House and bakery. Not bad choices. Let's have a look at immigrants. A little bit more stone. I like the idea of getting more stone. Efficient brewery. Yeah, I don't mind the extra brewing. Extra brewing potential. It means I can get 15 ale for a very, very small price. I'll set the limit here at like 90 ale. I just want to be constantly producing that. I think producing a little bit of wine is also good because you can sell that. And we'll also produce like a little bit of mushroom soup. And I'll totally just put those two humans that I freed up earlier into the brewery because this is going to be a significant boost um, and then I'll put another human into the tavern because that way I'm able to actually like I think you need a human working in the tavern to actually deliver the leisure I could be wrong but the nice thing is we do have a hearth over here and a storage god this is so much wheat um, it's actually a ridiculous amount of wheat in here let's think about how to solve our next mission the next mission we need to solve is getting farm fields yeah um, so I think to that end we'll get a couple of beavers going in here we'll pop them over here and try to clear out this farm field Grab ourselves a small farm eh, right there. Eh, that'll do the job right there just to grab this farm. I probably want another hearth and another storage over here somewhere relatively close by. Yeah, I'll pop the hearth right there. And I'll also pop a storage here and I'll kind of road it up a little bit. Not the most efficient road, but I think I think our road kind of does the job really. We'll prioritize the storage to plus five, the hearth to plus four, and it might be a good idea to get some shelter. We have a reputation point. I don't think I care about too much of this. I mean, a lizard house isn't a bad choice right now. Get that extra little bit of resolve towards the end of the game. There is seven lizard houses placed. And that should, in theory, house every single lizard that I have. Now, a lot of my lizards are unemployed. So we will use one lizard in here to work the fine smith. And then we'll pop a rain uh, collector over here. And we'll use the rain collector to actually fuel the um, fine smith with amber. And that should, in theory, give us a supply of amber that we normally wouldn't be able to get. So, ah, uh, there's Brotherhood. Excellent. Another perk point, as well as another five lizards who can do some work. A ton of amber. Guildhouse would allow me to fulfill education for free. Yeah, I'll grab a guildhouse. It's a relatively cheap thing that I can just throw down. It's about the size of the guild hall or the, the main storage. So I'll just pop it right behind it. Perfect. It's, quite, it's actually quite expensive. But the fact that it fulfills needs is quite good. Now I need to remember where I put all my um my woodcutters. I've got one here. Oh goodness. Okay, yeah. And I want to put another guy here. I might even get myself another woodcutter. Now I really, really, before I finish this game, I want to cut through to this super deadly, the giga deadly, the giga deadly glade. 
I think it's time. I want to know what the crown doesn't want me to know. You know what I mean? So I'm going to put, I'm actually going to put three woodcutters on this. What horrors lie beyond the veil of ignorance? That is the fog of war in this game. I want to know. I need to know. I'm not going to complete my orders. I could immediately finish this mission now, but I don't want to do that. Though I would actually complete my grain mission. Let's have a look. What do they not? What are they hiding in here? I'm kind of terrified. <laughs> I mean, like, if it's really, really bad, I can just immediately, like, like click, click, deliver, deliver, <laughs> and finish the mission without any consequences for my action. Oh, here it is. Ah. So big swamp wheat fields, lots of reed fields, a ton of fertile soil, a large abandoned cache, two large abandoned cache, a small destroyed caravan, spooky, and a destroyed rain punk foundry can produce parts, infused tools, and packs of building materials. Ooh, no downsides though. Like there was actually no downsides in here. So it just has a lot more bad stuff. I mean, fallen beaver traders is kind of bad. It's upsetting my beavers, but really this, this was an absolute just win. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. So that's what's hiding in those very dangerous ones, at least that time. Who knows what the next one is going to hold for us. I'm going to just just for the sake of my own sanity to make sure that I beat this goddamn road mission that I had, I'm just going to like spam roads in random directions because I'm tired of not having this mission completed. So I'll just give these guys a few seconds. That should be like way more than 200 roads. Like, let's be real. What perks can I pick up? 10% villager speed. Yes. More fabric production. Biscuits can be produced in grain mill. Mm. I really do think I'm starting to feel like picking up extra perks is actually huge. I'm tempted to like actually fix this. Oh, you need tools or parts. Oh. Difficult to acquire. All right, let's hand them in. Boom. Boom. Mission. Oh my god, we got so many perks. Look at this. Rolling in wealth. Dice with death. Dice with death. The Scarlet Orchard. Swamp Wheat Farmer. Cycle of wealth. 30 food. Nice. Let's go check out the world map. And things have advanced. Another few years have passed. The town of Zavu has been settled. I wonder why they're trying to settle here again. It's kind of weird. Let's head into the Citadel. Oh, look at that. We're slowly building up the Citadel. The Deeds. We finally did Swamp Wee Fighter. I, how did I not? How have I not done basic logistics? I, I don't understand. <laughs> I've built so many paths. I need to actually just spam paths, like do an insane amount of them. Rolling in wealth too. So we traded 600 goods worth of amber. Uh, a dice with death. Win a game with one dangerous glade event st still standing. Okay, cool. So I guess in theory, those counted as multiple dangerous glade events. I had two dangerous glade events, which is interesting because I didn't see them. They didn't look very dangerous, but I guess I won with them. We have access to more little cosmetic things. And we've actually completed the phase of the leech, which means the next cycle is going to have even more mechanics and more interesting stuff. Because this new cycle, they added this whole like faction mechanic, the first Dawn company, like placing their own towns. And then I can use their towns to bounce deeper into the um, into the fog which is kind of interesting. I probably will go ahead and pick up this Stonewood infestation. Ooh, out here it gets up into like the eight food per tile. Powerful, powerful stuff. So I see the deeper you get into the forest or the lands in general, the more valuable things are out here. Very cool. Let's have a look at the Smoldering City. We've done a whole bunch of deeds, got a whole bunch of rewards for doing those deeds. Trade goods worth 400 amber in one cycle. Damn, right, we're doing really, really well. Actually, there's also, we didn't, even, I, I really think I underutilize trade routes. I think they're actually more important than I keep <laughs> like thinking in my head. I just completely forget they exist. I've got 30 food and I don't have, so I really only have two choices here. It's a choice between the Monastery of the Vigilant Flame, which would give me access to tea, incense, and biscuits with the apothecary, as well as the tea doctor. Or I could go for the first dawn headquarters, get a new cornerstone, which means you gain five mushrooms for every 10 grain produced. That seems pretty powerful. Especially like these guys seem like to be heavily on the farming side of things. And I kind of like the farming build. Oh, the greenhouse produces mushrooms and herbs, regardless of the season, must be placed on fertile soil. Now that's an interesting idea. Interesting. Oh, what do we have here? The Vanguard Spire. Rebellious spirit. The people feel oddly rebellious. For every two impatience points the queen has with you, you gain one global resolve. And exploring expedition, which is a cornerstone. So these are both cornerstones. You took some of the best explorers from the smoldering city with you. Gain a constant minus five to global resolve, but you get plus 15 for three minutes every time a new glade is discovered. So this is like explore, explore, explore. And it'll, uh, it'll give you really, really positive effects. Interesting cornerstones. 
I like the idea of going more in a farming direction. I like the farming ideas. I don't even really want to look like far into some of these things because I feel like I would be spoiling myself if I went too deep into the tree. I, th I think I'm going to go for the first dawn headquarters here. Boom. I like the first dawn stuff. I like how they work. Um, I like their focus on farming. I'm a big fan of the farming stuff. I think that makes sense, actually. They keep trying to settle near these fertile grounds because they like to make farms. I really am curious. What happens if I try to settle where they're trying to settle? Like, do they get angry? Is there like some kind of competition triggered? Maybe something to try next cycle? Just like pop down on where they're going to land and see what happens. Uh, but I am going to call that the end of this episode. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.